Who would win in a cage fight, you or Rishi? Obviously me. Can you imagine Rishi in a cage fight? I am a scratcher, I'm brutal in the cage environment. And Rishi is a little f***ing pussy. Hello lads, it's me, Deborah Mead and Joe Lysett. And I'm here to answer the questions in the honesty box. I'm quite nervous about it. Does being funny get you laid? Not in my experience. Next. <laughs> Is wokeness killing comedy? Yes, ban it. <laughs> Makes me sick. That was sarcasm. I don't actually think wokeness is killing comedy. I think actually comedy is just evolving and getting better and more interesting. But don't tell the bloody press that. Who's your biggest crush in the government, past or present? I would love to give Jacob Rees-Mogg a hand job. <laughs> the offer's there, Jacob. Are you really right wing? What do you think? I'm a bit right wing. This is it, like, I'm sort of obviously quite left wing in terms of sort of social stuff, but then fiscally, if you've ever been for a curry with a load of hippies, Oh, I only had three poppadons. F off. Have you ever gotten into serious trouble uh, because of a joke or stunt that you've pulled? I, <clears throat> I did have the police called on me, and in, they, it wasn't an official investigation, but they wanted to see, uh, they wanted to see the joke. It was in my last stand-up show, and it was a visual joke. Uh, I was talking about um, how I was very camp as a child and I was showing some footage of me as a child, but the footage of me as a child, I was naked. I was about, I don't know, four, three or four. And I was told that I can't show footage of a naked child in my show. And I was like, but it, I'm the child, so I, I don't mind. And they were like, we just can't do it. Uh, you can't show a child's penis in a show. So I then said, well, can you show an adult's penis? And they said, yes. So I had a giant donkey superimposed onto my child's body. It's one of the funniest things I've ever done. And the audiences loved it until they didn't and called the police. <laughs> um, so, but no, no crime was, uh, they investigated, no crime was committed. And imagine that email to a design, an animator going, I need you to put an adult onto my child's body. Is there anything you refuse to joke about? If it's not funny, basically, is the idea. Uh, I don't I don't have any hard and fast rules about you can't joke about this, you can't talk about this. Um, I think the rule should always be what is the, is it surprising? Is it a unique viewpoint? Is it interesting? But is it funny? But I think you should and could talk about anything. And when you watch a lot of stand-up, you realise that is the case, that actually there's some amazing people talking about things. You go, whoa, how, how have you got away with that? But you sort of have. Um, so I refuse to talk about, uh, to do jokes about things that I don't think I can write jokes about. Um, but it doesn't mean that I don't think I should. It's just that I'm not a good enough comedian to write about them. I think you're f***ing awesome. Well, this one's from my mother, obviously. <laughs> what are you proudest of? Oh, that's interesting. Things like where I changed my name to Hugo Boss, I'm really proud of that as an idea and the fact that I pulled it off. If you don't know the Hugo Boss thing, Hugo Boss, the multi-million, I think billion dollar company, uh, sent legal letters to a small brewery in Swansea called Boss Brewing, telling them to stop using the word boss uh, because they thought it would confuse their customers who might not buy their fragrances uh, because they might try and spray themselves with beer. Um, and this costs Boss Brewing, a small independent brewery in Swansea, thousands of pounds. And I discovered, I sort of thought, well, obviously Hugo Boss don't like people using their name, so I should probably change it by deed poll, my name to Hugo Boss, which is what I did. And it was a lot of f***ing out of him. I can tell you that kind of thing. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having a little frog in throat moment. I might just have a little sip. Would you like some water? No, I'm fine. Worth checking out, there's this cafe called Pret, <laughs> which is, uh, uh, it's amazing. They do, they've got like salads in there and the coffee's fine. It's absolutely fine. Pret just means ready. I think it means ready, so. Because it was Pret a manger, ready, ready, to, ready to eat. Ready to eat. So it's just the place called ready. Ready. <laughs> Will you be my mummy? Not possible. 
What is cancel culture's impact on comedy? I think that、um, people are more thoughtful about what they write jokes about. I think they are less.、Um, I certainly am. I write about things in a different way. There are jokes I have done in the past that I wouldn't do now, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's good for you to、um, evolve and develop and realise. Oh, you might hurt someone with that. Thing that you think is just a throwaway thing, so it has probably made life difficult for people who just want to do lazy material. But I think, really, it's made it a better industry and a more、uh, inclusive and interesting industry. Is my personal opinion. How do you think audiences feel about it? I think some audiences probably feel like they've been left behind, that they used to enjoy the sort of stuff that might have happened in the past, and that nobody's really doing that anymore, and that they're not,、um, their views aren't represented. But I do think you can find that stuff, and if you don't like what you're seeing somewhere, you don't have to watch it. You can find probably you've just got to look around a bit more. There will be a comic out there. If you're looking for racist stuff, you can find it. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. It's there. Who would win in a cage fight, you or Rishi? Obviously me. Can you imagine Rishi in a cage fight? I am a scratcher. I'm brutal in the cage environment, and Rishi is a little fucking pussy. <laughs> Do we live in a society that champions free speech? Um, compared to a lot of countries, I think we do allow. Free speech. The fact that I just said Rishi Sunak's a <laughs> is、uh, allows me to say that I yeah we have free speech. Anything I'd go to jail for? Let's try that. Let's see if I can be jailed for something. Let's be my next stunt. Is joke theft a real thing? It is, and it's interesting. I don't know what I feel about this because it's very difficult to、uh, in music. It gets very litigious very quickly, as we've all seen. But in comedy, it doesn't in the same way because there's no precedent for it. And I do like that there can be an exchange of ideas, and people can take something old and make it new. And I do think that's what creativity is. But then some people do literally have jokes that they've written for themselves, just nabbed from them, and that doesn't feel fair either. So I, yeah, I don't. It is. It is a real thing. But I don't know how you police it, really. Having said that, I know I have obviously stolen the entire act from Julian Clary. Shag, marry, kill. A. Castor, Romesh, Catherine Ryan. I'd kill them all. <laughs> and no, <laughs> I was going to say something there. And then marry the corpse. Are you a troll? Yeah, yeah. But I like to think that I troll. People that、um, uh, can both take it and should be trolled. I'm not a sort of、um, random. I don't do it at random. I like to take on big companies. I did have a lot of fun trolling the CEO of RBS Bank,、um, who at the time、uh, did not have a Twitter account. So I very generously set one up for him, and tweeted the sort of things that he would tweet, and then、um, started tweeting things like. This was the level. I think the tweet was "I've got a smelly bum bum," <laughs> and that ended up as a huge article in the Metro newspaper with his face next to the tweet.、Um, so that might have been a tough day for him. Ross McEwen was his name. I hope he's doing well. <laughs> What do you really think of Lad Bible?、Um, well, everyone's been very nice to me, and I haven't spotted any real lad culture here. But I don't know if everyone has a big wank after this. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> But everyone seems very nice. But lad culture, I think, should be going the direction of the people at Lad Bible, which is there are lots of different types of being a lad. And it doesn't have to be Ooh, a few points. But that is also valid, as long as you're being kind. Is comedy diverse enough? It's getting better. And compared to when I started 15 or so years ago, when I was on bills with mainly sort of middle-aged straight white men who were talking about their mother-in-laws, it's a lot better. But I think we can always improve there, and、um, I'm glad that it's going in the right direction there. Does comedy help deal with depression and anxiety? I think so. I'm sure there are studies on it. I, it, I definitely think it helps、um, me. I don't suffer with depression, luckily, but、um, anxiety—it's definitely 
it's a way of pushing some horrible things away. And if you can make them light in any way, I think that's a, it's one of the great human skills that you can make bad things seem silly. And uh, I think it was Charlie Chaplin that said that, uh, you know, life in seen in a wide lens is comedy and close up is tragedy. And I think that's great. How do you keep a straight face? I have never had a straight face. How dare you? How do you deal with hecklers? Um, violence. I will kill you. <laughs> Is Birmingham accent the least sexy in the UK? No, I find it, do I find it sexy? I find it reassuring and um, comforting. And both of those things are important around sex. But I think the Birmingham accent gets a hard, uh, hard press and um, I love it, but I get why people don't, because it does sort of sound like you've given up on life. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. But that might be sexy to you, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to pop that <laughs> in my gob. <laughs> yeah, I think that's sexy. <laughs> Show me your d**ks. <laughs> yeah. But only if you want. Are all famous comedians talented? Yeah. I, it's sort of wishy-washy answer, but I sort of think everyone's talented in different ways. You've just got to find out how. Maybe, maybe the, what you're trying to get out there is are all famous comedians talented at comedy? And um, I think we all know the answer is no. <laughs> Biggest misconceptions about comedy slash comedians? Well, when I started, I thought everyone would be really horrible and that the backstage environment would be very combative and people would be undermining you. And that was the absolute opposite. People were really nice. So I think people think that comedians are, can be nasty people, but that's very rare in my experience. I was going to, <laughs> apart from Dawn French, no, she's very lovely. Um, <laughs> have you received death threats? Um, not that I've seen, I don't think, but there's a first for everything. Do send me your death threats and send them uh, to the following address. No. <laughs> Do people get too hung up on language? I don't really know what the question is there. Like hung up in the sense that, you know, we'll get sort of, you can't say that word, you can't use that word these days. Um, I don't think so. I think it's, it, Certain words have real power to them. And I know that the reason I use comedy for the things that I do, the campaigns that I do, is because it has power. And if you make someone look silly, they don't like it and it can hurt, some, hurt people. And words do, um, do matter. And so I think it's not unreasonable to ask people to think about the words they use. And I'm... Um, yeah, I've definitely used words and uh, said things in the past where I didn't realise the power of the word, I didn't realise what I was saying. And I, um, I think that's just sort of part of learning about different cultures and backgrounds and genders and sexualities. I think that's all, it's good. It's, it's good to be curious. Don't ever use the word moist though. Will you ever include Lad Bible in your material? I think I already have. One thing that I've definitely done is recently I've been seeding fake news stories, um, things that are sort of silly that um, haven't actually happened. Uh, the idea being that it will sort of push out the more polarising fake news and it will just be silly fake news instead. And um, Lad Bible ran one of those stories. Which one is it? Are you any good at impressions? I can do an impression of Peter Dixon that does uh, voiceovers. Uh, famously, he did The X Factor. Live from London, it's Rachel Adadeji. Is being a comedian a proper job? No. It's not really, is it? It's not, you're not on the rigs. You're not at the coal face. But it doesn't mean it's not valuable. Do you read reviews? Yes. I don't respect it as a job. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you really laugh? Loads, every day, it's really good for you. Have you ever regretted making a joke about a sensitive topic? Yeah, a few times. And um, 
uh, yeah, I've, I've written about things uh, in a lazy way and in a way that, you know, particularly when you're trying to do sarcasm, what you're relying on is that the sarcasm is clear and sometimes that doesn't go well. Um, so yeah, there's definitely things I've regretted and uh, that I would would do differently now. But I sort of, I don't regret it necessarily because it's part of the process of learning to write jokes in a, and get better at it. So I, d I wouldn't not do it, but I wouldn't do it now, if that makes sense. I understand why I did it then, but I've learnt now to not do it. In the same way that like, you know, I, you know, I've learned not to have Jaeger bombs every night because it's better, <laughs> but I learnt that. I did loads of Jaeger bombs once. It's the shits afterwards that they don't tell you about. Do all comedians want to go into acting? Uh, no, I don't really want to go into acting. I've done one acting job. It was a voice acting job in a American series called Bird Girl on Adult Swim. And I played uh, Graham, I think his name was, the talking foreskin. <laughs> And the foreskin was on a character called David and he was shagging someone called Helen and my parents called David and Helen. Why does every comedian have a podcast now? Because it is lucrative. <laughs> How do you cope with your material being taken out of context? That can be quite tricky because um, sometimes you, can ex you spend a lot of time writing a routine to make sure that all the information is delivered in the right order and in the right way. And if it's clipped up badly, it can just not work. And it's quite annoying when someone clips me. I've seen people clip up stand up and they've just clipped out the punchline. And you go, this is just a sentence. Um, so that is annoying. Um, how do you cope with it? You just sort of have to get on with it, really. Of all the issues in life, it's quite low down on the list. Until I get cancelled for it, and then I'll come back to you. Have you ever been able, unable, so that would be a weird question. Have you ever been able to walk out on stage? Uh, have you ever been unable to walk out on stage? Um, no, but I've got like that feeling of like, I can't do this. I'm not, you know, not prepared. I'm not ready. I don't know what I'm doing. Definitely had all of that. But um, the fact that you've got to be on stage at a certain point just means you sort of do it. And then it is fine. Does it get easier? It gets easier to deal with the nerves and the adrenaline. You get you learn tricks with all of that, but it doesn't get a easier to do the job. It c continues, and it's why it's f fun to do and why it's a, an interesting job. <clears throat> is you never you've never won. There's always you've always got to develop. You can always get better, and there's always a chance that you can die. On your and Literally, like on my last tour show when I was doing previews for it, I had a preview that went really well, and then I went and did a gig, and I died on my ass. And that happened within the same evening. And that can happen quite a lot. The, the ratio gets better, but it's still always a risk. What happens when comedians all hang out together? Um, I love hanging out with comedians, and it's one thing that I miss when I tour particularly, because you don't get to hang out with comedians, and they are often, uh, obviously there's some exclusions to this, but they're often some of the most thoughtful, lovely, and obviously funny people you will be around. They're, they're like philosophers, you know, they're thinking in a different way and they've got unique viewpoints. And I love uh, the generosity of comedians. I love how, um, how weird they are. There's like, it's, it's definitely, there's something not right to decide to go and do stand up in your brain. And I, yeah, I really love being backstage with a bunch of comics, just shooting the breeze. And I remember, um, I've forgotten his bloody name now. What's the name of the uh, American comedian? The biggest American comedian. Uh, he's been caught up in trans stuff recently. That is so bad, I can't remember his name. Mm -hmm. Chappelle. Chappelle! Thank you, yeah, the, 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 the comedian, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> so Dave Chappelle, um, uh, when he, he won an award for comedy and he said that what he loves about comedy is that he can watch a comedian uh, say things that he disagrees with and that um, are racist or, uh, you know, actively against him and he can admire the artistry with which they present their racism. And I thought that was really, uh, that really connected with me and that, like, there's, 
there is a like a kind of bit of a club of uh you know co comedians together and we might not agree about everything but we love the art of comedy um yeah i thought that was nice i don't agree with everything Chappelle says obviously but i don't agree with any i don't agree with myself most of the time <laughs> i'm only seeing sherbet here where's my you've got a lolly in there mate feel it gotta be right there's not a lolly in it <laughs> i've not got a lolly this is like a faulty packet <laughs> that you, is just pure. That is all, all dip and no dap. 